Hello friends, very good morning. Myself, Dr. M.H. Chandaya. And uh, in today's video, we are going to work out a problem on a welded joint which is subjected to a tensile load. And in today's video, the question reads like this. A steel plate of 50 mm wide and 15 mm thick is to be welded to another plate by a transverse weld. When we say transverse weld, the welding, that the fillet welding, whatever you are doing now, is subjected to a tensile load and welding is done perpendicular to the load axis. A transverse weld is also called as a normal weld. Determine the length of the weld required when the load is static, that is the case 1, and second part is when the load is dynamic or fatigue loading. Friends, let us write the question as per this problem. So friends, we have got a plate whose width is given to be 50 millimeter and that is welded to another plate by a transverse weld. Say this is the welding done and uh, let us say this is the length of the weld L, a fillet weld and this is subjected to a tensile load P is equal to 25 kilo newton. As length of weld is equal to so and so, yes, this is subject to a tensile load of 25 kilo meter. Kilo newton. So P is 25 kilo newton and this is tensile in nature. So here also you are going to have this P. P is 25 kilo newton. And here we have been asked to find out the length of the weld required to sustain this load of 25 kilo newton. Friends, here let us consider the case 1. That is when the load is static. Friends, if you refer to the machine design data handbook, there is a formula which connects the length of weld to the tensile load the weld is subjected to, and it is given as sigma tensile or tensile stress in the weld is given by P divided by. 0.707 h into l where the sigma tensile is given as 110 so sigma tensile is given as 110 newton per mm square if not given there is a table in the machine design data handbook and you have to refer and obtain the value of the sigma tensile p is the load that is given as 25 kilo newton 25 into 10 to the power of 3 newton h is the plate thickness that is given in the problem plate thickness is given as 15 mm that is this plate which is having a width is equal to 50 mm dimensions are given under plate 15 mm thickness and 50 mm wide. I will call this as D that is equal to width equal to 50 mm and the thickness of this I will show here as a cross section that is given as 15 mm. So this is 15 mm. Friends, you got the thickness and the width and uh, this is a millimeter plate thickness and L is the length of the weld that is to be found out. Length of weld. Friends, we are considering the case number one when the load is static. Friends, if you make this substitution of all these values, you will get this as 110 sigma tensile is load is 25 into 10 to the power of 3 divided by. 0.707 into h is 15 into l the length of the weld 
that is required to sustain this load. Friends, if you simplify this, you are going to get the length of the weld as 21.4 mm. You will get length of the weld equal to 25, 21.4. So, L is equal to 21.4 mm. This is the answer for the first part. The length required when the load is static. And friends, let us move on to the second part of the question. What is the length of the weld required when the load is dynamic? That is case B, when load is dynamic or pedicloric. Load is dynamic. Friends, here we make use of the same formula as you have used, but what happens in case of the dynamic load serpentic load? The joint fails at a smaller value of stress compared to that of the static load. And in the machine design data handbook, you have the value of this fatigue stress concentration factor. And this is going to be a value 1.5 for the transverse loading. So when the load is dynamic, we have the sigma allowable or the permissible stress is equal to sigma tensile by fatigue stress concentration factor fatigue stress concentration factor the value is given to us if not given you have to refer to the handbook and work time so this is given as 110 and the fatigue stress concentration factor is 1.5 Friend, this works out to 73.3 73.3 that is to say this joint failed at a stress value you cannot go beyond this so it fails at a smaller value of stress so apart from this allowable stress all other parameters remain the same and you have to substitute in the formula and obtain what is the length of weld required. Friends, you will write again here sigma tensile or sigma allowable in this case is equal to P divided by 0.707 H into L and this is 73.33 just now you have calculated P is 25 kilo newton converted to newton divided by 0 0.707 into H is 15 mm and the length to be found out will get the value. So in case number 2 L is equal to a value 38.147 38. 147 mm. Friend, this is the answer for the first part, answer for the second part. And you observe here, friend, since in the fatigue loading, the joint fails at a smaller value of stress, we need to have more length compared to that of the static loading. And, and you can observe here, friends, the width of the plate is 50 mm, whereas the length of weld required in both the cases for static and dynamic case it is far lesser than the width of the plate. So whenever the length of weld required is lesser than the width of the plate I can just write down here. When L is lesser than plate width comma a single normal weld single transverse weld is sufficient to withstand load To withstand load. So 
So you may ask me a question. So what happens if the length of weld required is more than the plate width? That is, this is becoming say 60 mm. You have to extend both the sides. But this extension beyond the width of the plate is of no use. So when the length is lesser than the plate width, a single transverse <coughs> weld is sufficient. And if L is greater than B, the plate width, plate width, then friends, you will have to go in for double transverse weld. What do we do in double transverse weld? You have got the welding done here. Again, on the bottom side of this also, we are going to have the weld. And whatever the length of weld you get, the total length is divided equally. Suppose 100 mm, sorry, uh, 120 mm, 60 mm, sorry. Say some length you get here, that is to be divided equally. And we are going to adopt a double transverse weld or a double normal weld. But in this case, the length is lesser than the plate width in both the dynamic load and also for the static load. And hence, we need not go in for the double transverse weld. A single transverse weld is sufficient to withstand this load. Friends, I hope the presentation was interesting. Please go through the complete video. And if you like this video, do share with all your friends without fail. Have a nice day.